Hi, Catherine here with Circle Art Designs. Today we will be working with a project from On My Work Table. This is project two from the Jesse James Aqua Mix. This is actually a special order, so it will not be up in my shop, but it's the reason that I bought this Aqua Mix in the first place. So let's get started, shall we? So before we get started and pulling out all the things we'll need for this project, let's turn our eyes down to my table where I see this beautiful, let's give thanks to the Lord. I do give thanks to the Lord. I give thanks for the, the privilege of being able to make jewelry and having a YouTube community to share it with. It has just been a real blessing in my own life. I think we should all take time every day to think of at least one thing that the Lord has given you that is a blessing. Even when times are hard, it is remembering the blessings that he has given us that gives us the strength that we need to carry on in a joyful manner as we go about our day. So let's give thanks to the Lord. Are we ready to get started? Let's go. So I put my mat down and turning on my lights. I always have to turn the lights off whenever I first look down at my table because when I don't, you can see the lights and the reflection of the glass. Okay, let's mark the center of my mat. Well, it's not exactly the center, but it looked like the center when I started. And let's open up our bag that we will be using today for this special order necklace. Do you see that pendant that is still the giant bead that's still sitting in the sack? Well, when my friend saw this, she decided she wanted a piece from it. And she said, oh, Catherine, if I buy these beads, would you make me a necklace? I'll pay you for it and you get to keep the leftovers. I said, absolutely. So this is the design I came up for, for that beautiful bead. Now, the things that we have for this are, first of all, these beautiful faceted ovals. They're in a blue AB flash so that they flash purple. The next, and those are from the, uh, the Aqua Mix, but the next ones that I'm showing you are from the Potom from Potomac and they're a red garnet bead. And this is a soft flex wire in a medium and it's called turquoise. So let me go ahead and put the rest of these out and I will get you a picture that shows you everything that we're going to use. So starting with the purple beads on the left, we have these beautiful round, well actually they're oval amethyst beads and I got these from Fire Mountain. The next ones over are these big oval faceted glass beads. They're in a beautiful blue with an AB flash that causes it to flash purple. The next thing right under that you will need two of the wire guards because this will be put on wire. And then right next to that, you will see this lovely flower pendant. This is in a turquoise blue, and it has antique gold on it. And it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous bead. I can understand why she wanted a piece made out of it. Then moving on around, you will see the Potomac beads, and I showed that to you. The Potomac beads are three millimeter. I believe they're three millimeter. Yes, and they are called garnet glass beads, and they are faceted round beads, and they're lovely. They're the garnet that shines uh, slightly purple, so therefore you have the purple in the blue oval, and you have the purple beads, and they all kind of go with it. And this purple matches the turquoise on the color wheel, just lovely. Now. As we go on around, you will see a lobster claw clasp. You will need one of those. 
you will need some jump rings and you will need a I'm going to put a necklace extender on it because I would like my friend to be able to wear it either she wanted 21 inches but sometimes the necklace needs to go a little lower so I am going to go ahead and put a necklace extender and then to for the illusion necklace part of it I will be using the soft flex and a medium and this is the color turquoise and it is gorgeous it goes with that be pendant bead beautifully this is going to be a lovely graduated color and i think that you will like it all right oh to add to that i will show you in a minute but you will need some number two crimps and as i said you will need a two Number two, crimps. These are my bead along. For tools, you'll need uh, straight nose pliers. You'll need your wire cutters. And I have a curved nose and a chain nose plier for opening jump rings and closing them. And then you'll need your crimper. Now for crimping, if, since this is an illusion necklace, if you want to just use your chain those pliers you can and just mash it flat the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this beautiful turquoise isn't that lovely I hope there's enough on this spool to do another project but you're going to take it and I'm measuring this out to 24 inches that gives me an inch on either end to play with and it will give me the length that the lady said that she would like to have it so once I get it cut and I do use my wire cutters because this is a wrapped wire it is not thread so you don't want to use ruin your scissors I'm gonna go ahead and pull out if I can get this lid open um, a couple of the crimps now you're going to need a total of four four no you're gonna need a total of six crimps for this project and um, so the first thing I will do is I will put a crimp on and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put on my wire guard so to put on a wire guard it's shaped like a upside down U or a small N put it through the tube on one side then you're going to bring it around see how it goes through that tube bring it around and put it through the tube on the other side let's see if I can hit that oh I did yay <laughs> okay now once you get that done go ahead and pull that crimp up and put it through both wires and it's very important that when you put it through your wires that not only do you cinch it right up against that wire guard but check it and make sure that the wires don't twist on top of each other now using your crimping tool put it in the back hole making sure that the wires before you crimp are not twisted see I let go of mine too soon and they twisted back up again but once you've got that done then you're going to go ahead and put it in that back hole let me get it back there it's the bigger of the two holes so you start at the back with crimpers and you mash it down now when you mash it down turn it over and make sure it's made an M and there is a wire coming out of both sides of that M then put it in the front turn it half a turn and mash the M together so that it makes this little ball or if you're using a tube it'll make a little tube with a bend on one side then give it a little tug and you really want to tug hard whenever you do that because you're making sure that that crimp is set because if it isn't set this wire guard will pull out with the weight of your beads now for the next step I didn't tell you this 
because I didn't decide it when I was laying stuff out, but I really want a pretty finish for the end of this necklace. So I'm going to put on three silver spacer, I'm sorry, gold spacer balls. It doesn't really matter what you put on to finish this end. You don't want it too big because you do not want it to overpower this beautiful uh, beading wire that you're using. But you do want something to finish off the end. So if you look at that, I think that is gorgeous. And then I'm going to put on a crimp, just like that. Now on the other end, I will put these on before I put on my wire guard. But I wasn't really sure what I was going to use on the end. It was kind of a last minute decision. I love being creative, don't you? All right, so we have those three in place. We've got the crimp on. We're going to put it in that back hole. We're going to mash it down. I did make sure that the wires were not crossed. And then I'm going to make a half a turn and mash it down again. Now, if you have done your crimp correctly, your bead should not slide. It should be really solid. And you can go ahead and cut your extra wire really close. Well, a lot of people say that you can cut it right up against the bead, and you probably can, but I'm always a little cautious. So I'm going to take my wire cutters, and I'm going to cut it almost next to the bead. And I mean like a millimeter or less next to the bead. And then I'm going to fill it to make feel it to make sure <laughs> that the, um, come on, bring your hands down, Catherine. Nope, you didn't catch it. I'm sorry. I was feeling it to make sure that there wasn't a rough spot on the wire because this is a wire, a wrapped wire, and there is wire in it. If there's a rough spot, you're going to have to take a little file and file that rough spot down. So let's set up our necklace. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put that lovely, lovely pendant in the center. I'm so glad that she chose this. This is just gorgeous. Then building from the center out, I'm putting on the oval faceted blue AB flash beads. And both the pendant and the beads are in that aqua mix from Design By Me by Jesse James. I got a notice that Jesse James now has their window boxes for sale in, on their website, as well as being able to buy them at Walmart. The next thing will come will be the three amethyst beads from, oh my, from Fire Mountain. And then I'm putting these garnet glass beads that are from Potomac Beads. And that will be the setup. So it's pendant, one of the ovals, three of the amethysts, and five of the garments. Garnets. Garments. Yes, I would like to have five garments on yesterday when it was so cold. Five of the garnets. All right. So let's start. Okay, what am I doing? Okay. So what I'm starting with is I'm putting on a, um, oh, Catherine, a crimp. It's time for me to have lunch. I'm going to have to stop this pretty quick. <laughs> then I'm going to put on one of the three millimeter beads. Whatever spacer bead you're using for this necklace, I am actually just using the spacer beads to make components, like I would make components to go together in a chain necklace. But for this one, again, we're starting out with a crimp, a spacer bead, and then the five little glass garnet beads. Aren't those gorgeous? You know, these are some of those beads that I bought. I take them out, I look at them, and I go, oh, they're so pretty, what if I can never get any more? But it was just perfect for this. So once we do that, 
Then I'm going to move some more of these three millimeters. And what I was saying, it doesn't really matter what you use for the spacer beads, but you do want to divide the illusion necklace into sections. And so I'm using the spacer beads to do that. The next thing is the amethyst. And if you can blow this picture up and look at those beads and tell me what type of bead that is, that would be amazing. But I, again, these amethyst beads are beads that I bought about a year and a half ago. I put them in my collection and proceeded to lose the piece of paper. So I know they're amethyst glass but I do not know where I got them. And I'm sorry, the garnets are from Fire Mountain and the Ameth, no, from Potomac and the glasses from Fire Mountain. I looked, I did not see any more of it. I probably bought it on a clearance sale. I'm big on clearance sales. I love to shop clearance sales. So now I've put on another one of the spacers and then I've put on the faceted and another spacer. So let me see if I can't get a picture of it. So here's a screenshot of the layout and I have put up above it the different beads. I said two millimeter on those garnets but I believe they are three millimeter. That's just a typo. All right let's continue on. Now as you can see thing to go on will be that lovely pendant the reason I wanted to make sure I use spacers is do you see how much bigger the hole is? This could actually take a beautiful piece of leather and it would be gorgeous. But when I'm putting it on this soft flex, I want to make sure that I have something that will that will downsize that hole. So now then we're going to just go ahead and reverse what we have done with a spacer, the faceted ovals, a spacer, and continue on. And as we are doing this, if you have not liked this video, would you please pause a moment and give it a like and maybe leave a comment? And would you please subscribe if you have not subscribed to this channel? It really helps me to grow the channel and I really enjoy the company. When you do that, every time I put a video out, it should send you a notice that I have a new video out. Thank you so much. I really love the way this piece is turning out. It is just lovely. Look at the sparkle on those beads. Because of my camera setup, sometimes I think, oh, this isn't really showing. But I really, really love the sparkle on these beads. All right, so let me go ahead and lay out some of the other ones. I hope you are doing a fine today. I hope you've had a wonderful week. I know a lot of the country has had some pretty uh, strange weather. But I am just praying that we have all gotten through it. And I know there's another cold front, at least for our area and going up. Um, coming our way, it started blowing in yesterday. But you know, it doesn't show that it's going to have sleet or snow or rain. And the sun is shining. And that makes it just a glorious blessing. Okay, look at there. We've got the garnets on. And now we're putting on our um, three millimeter spacer. And then we're going to add another crimp. Isn't that pretty? You know, if truth be told, I wouldn't mind having one of these for myself. I will go back up to the store. You can get these at Walmart, but like I said, a lot of the pieces, they sell out at Walmart. And I was so happy to get that notice that they were now going to be carried on Jesse James' website. All right, here goes the crimp. Now we're going to, we have a crimp on either end of the stack of beads. And that's because this is an illusion necklace and it will not be beaded all the way up. 
only in the center. And that's to show off this gorgeous soft flex wire. If you haven't been over to soft flex, you should go and just check out their colors. They're amazing. All right, so again, now I put on a second crimp, so that's two crimps in a row, my three spacer balls, and then I'm going to put on another crimp and we'll get put on the wire guard. So when we ended our necklace in the middle, we put on a crimp. Then I moved up to the end of the beading wire. I put on another crimp, three spacers, another crimp, and now I am putting on my beading wire. I hope you caught it. I was checking myself to make sure I was going to make the ends exactly the same. That's a good habit to get into. Whenever you're doing the ends of your necklaces, always take a moment and make sure you have got the thing correct. All right, for the wire guard, I have put it through the loop. I'm going around the curve and I'm putting through the loop again. Sorry, that was my little dog. He sounded like a big dog, didn't he? But it was my little dog. Somebody knocked on the fur. All right. Now, once we have got that wire guard on, I'm retrieving my uh, three spacer balls and my crimp. The first crimp is going to go right up against that wire guard, just like we did on the other end. Going to make sure the wires are straight, that they look pretty straight as long as I don't give them up. Oh, I tried to cut the wire. I had a brain lapse when the dogs barked, right? And so then we're putting it in the back, looking to make sure it's in that back hole, mashing it down, and it will make a M. And then I'm going to turn it, and we're going to go again and close that M up so it's closed just like that. Make a tug so we know it's on there really well. And then we'll go ahead and pull these up and get them through both wires, making sure that it goes through the crimp as well. So that is a total of six crimps for this necklace. Okay, once I have got that in place, I'm going to hold it and make sure the 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 wire doesn't twist on that end. I'm going to catch it right there in the crimp. This is a little trick more tricky because <laughs> you've got all these beads on and it just is trickier for me. Maybe it wouldn't be for you, but it is for me. So I crimped. Then I'm going to put it in the front, catch it and crimp again. Let's see here, just like that. Oh, I don't know about y'all, but I think this is turning out really well. I just love these pieces. So pretty. I I'm I like color. You wouldn't know it to know my wardrobe because I think everything I own has some black that goes with it. But I just love color. All right, so here I have I'm holding my ends together and then I'm bringing the beads down to the center of the necklace. Now, if you watch the one where I did the gilded water necklace, you'll know that um, you want to always make this in a U whenever you are putting a illusion necklace together where you have the a, a lot of beads at the bottom because you want it to be tight enough that your beads make the pattern but you don't want it to be so tight that it won't have movement when we did uh, our last bracelet we talked about the need for movement it has to have enough play to have movement but not enough play that it will it will uh, be uh, what we used to say just loose 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 or well anyway so 
So I have mashed that crimp down. Now this time when you are doing your crimp, that wire is only going to come out of one side. And that's okay as long as you get the crimp tight. Make sure you really mash down the first one and then really mash down the second one because you don't want that crimp to move. One of these sides moved the first time, I thought, but it was really that I had forgotten I hadn't done the other side. So, <laughs> and of course it would move. If I pulled on it, they're all going to move back up the other side. <laughs> okay, here we go. I know lunch is calling me. All right, here we go now. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take that crimp. I hold it very loosely in the back and then I bring it back down. I'm checking to make sure it was still moving. And then I'm going to crimp in the back. I'm going to do a half turn and I'm going to crimp in the front. Now, like I said, uh, and I have done it on others, you can use your straight, your chain nose pliers a lot. Of, do you see how that's loose? I'm going to break in right there. I did not get it crimped in the back tight enough so it didn't grab the wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back in the back and I'm going to really mash it down. And then I'm going to put it back in the front and go ahead and mash it together and that way it shouldn't move and it caught you just have to be careful when you're using one wire that it really catches in that back loop now when you use a chain nose plier it will mash it flat and it is very important that you mash it really flat if that's what you're doing. Usually I only do that when I'm using number ones and that's on a fine wire. When I do a number two or more, I always go with the crimper so that it makes the little ball. All right, we're getting ready to finish this up. We're going to go ahead and lay out the jump rings that we need. I am using jump rings that have already been opened. If you don't know how to open a jump ring, you put it between two pliers and twist one side. Please never, never pull it apart. It ruins the jump ring, even if you get it to go back together, because wire like clay, I've said it before, has memory. To put it together, you're going to put it on the um, wire guard, then you're going to put your necklace extender and then twist with the wrist to close it back up. We're doing the next side, which is jump ring on the wire guard, lobster claw the correct direction, and twist just like that with the wrist. And this necklace is complete. Remember, a good habit to get into is to always make sure your lobster claw opens before you put it on your necklace. I have, can't tell you how many times I put on one that the spring was broken. All right, so we have closed this up. When I do my necklaces, I usually leave one side just a little bit shorter than the other so I can go into the first or second link of the extender. And there is the finished product. Isn't that lovely? I just love this finished piece. I love the colors. It's just gorgeous. The way the reddish purple goes into the purple, goes into the blue purple, goes into the, the blue turquoise, and then that turquoise rib uh, wire. It, it's just gorgeous. I know the customer is going to like it. And here are pictures. Thank you so much for joining me on this beading adventure today. I have had an amazing time designing and putting this necklace together. I hope that you have a wonderful beading adventure of your own today and a fantastic weekend. God bless y'all. I'll see you next week.
Catherine, Circle Art Designs, dot square, dot site. Bye, y'all.